الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد In our previous class we were reading what the author he had mentioned رحمه الله تعالى about the etiquettes and the manner of the student while he is coming to the class and while he is in the class and from that is that he will free his mind and empty his heart of distractions and uh, the different ideas and thoughts that are in his heart or on his mind he will free his heart from these affairs and likewise he will purify himself uh, again inwardly first and foremost having a beautiful intention coming to learn and to benefit and uh, to seek the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, likewise with uh, clothing that is proper and clean as well in the best manner and he mentioned a number of affairs with regards to this likewise he mentioned the issue of uh, entering if he comes in a congregation or if he comes with a with other students along with him and they come through the door or through the pathways that the one who is more knowledgeable or the one who is older he will go first and the origin with regards to that is is the elder in age is the elder in age and uh, this is what has been mentioned in the narrations likewise from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we see in the narration previously from ibn umar radiyallahu anhuma that Jibreel alayhi salam amara an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an yukabbira yani an yukaddim uh, al akabir an yukaddim al akabir this narration was in al musnad by al imam ahmed but also the same narration but with a slightly different wording has come in al bukhari and muslim and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he saw a dream and in that dream he was using the miswak and there were two individuals with him and uh, he went sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give the miswak to the younger to the al asghar min huma and at this time he was ordered to give it to the to the elder he was ordered to give it to to the elder so the people of knowledge they mentioned that this is the case that uh, in the likes of these affairs one he will begin with the elder the elder he has the right the elder he has the right and he first and foremost of honor and respect so if two people are going through the door he will not look at the one who is on the right and this is something that maybe somebody will say you're on the you're on the right but actually this is something that the people of knowledge have mentioned is not uh, established rather that which is established is the one that is the elder and we have seen the narrations with regards to that and uh, Sheikh Ibn Baz rahimahullah ta'ala he said that he was unaware of any particular sunnah where the, the one on the right has absolute uh, priority or takes precedence absolutely. And uh, the narrations that have come with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in these circumstances, uh, in, in this circumstance, we see that in reality, each circumstance, there, there is the beginning with the one who is, who is the greatest. It will be beginning with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then after that yani, he will give it to the one uh, on, on the right like with the issue of drinking uh, the drink whenever Ibn Abbas and Anhuma is there with uh, Abu Bakr and Umar and the companions radiallahu anhum that the Prophet began with himself and then to the right so this is beginning with the, with the Kabir so therefore the, a person he'll begin with the kabir and then on the right of the kabir for example if he's going to come into a gathering and, and shake the hands then he'll begin with the, the one who was the, the elder and then he'll go to his right or if he's going to uh, pour drinks for the people he'll begin with the elder and then go to the right of of the elder and this is similar to what he's mentioning here in any case now whenever he's coming to the masjid or coming to the lesson the, the one who uh, is older in age he will be shown precedence and allowed to go and it's mentioned likewise if that elder allowed someone who may be younger than him in age but he is uh, more knowledgeable to go then this likewise this likewise is something that is good and as well as is established 
Also, we were reading in the previous class the issue of uh, coming to the gathering, of coming to the gathering, that a person, he will not step over the, the necks of the people, meaning he will not harm the people whenever he's coming to the gathering. And this is where we, start on our, where we stopped in our previous class. So he says that whenever he comes now into the gathering, he will not step over their necks. He will not step over their necks. He will not harm them to, to go uh, around them or to go over them in order to come to the front. Uh, in order to, to come to the front. And uh, likewise, this has come in, uh, in the narrations. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's seen a man on the day of Jumu'ah doing the likes of this. He came late and the people are already sitting and he's stepping over the people trying to come forward. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to him, Ijlis faqad adayta. Sit down, indeed you've harmed the people. Sit down, indeed you have harmed, harmed the people. So this is something that is harmful and it's something that is rude, that a person he will come late and then uh, disturb the people and bother them and, and step over them in order to come to come to the front, in order to come to the front. So he will not do that. And he says, And he will sit wherever the, the gathering ends, and wherever he comes. If he comes in and the gathering is in, the, the, the gathering is a large and crowded gathering, and the people sitting in the gathering uh, go far back into the back of the message, for example, then he will sit in the back, wherever the gathering ends. He will come to that point and sit down. He will come to that point and sit down. So this is the case. Likewise, it has been narrated on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in these affairs. From the hadith of Jabir ibn Samara radiallahu anhu. He said, Kunna idha atayna al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam jalasa ahaduna haythu yantahi. Yani haythu yantahi al-majlis. That one of us, whenever we came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would sit where the gathering ends. And he will come to that place. He will not step over the people and try to find an empty spot in, in the front or to squeeze in and the likes like this. So this is something that is from uh, the noble and the good manners. From the noble and, and the good manners. Likewise, he says, this is the case except if the teacher uh, allows him to do that. Or if those who are present, they allow him to do that. Meaning they, they know that this individual, he has some special uh, quality or qualification, or he is someone who is known that will sit near the teacher in order to benefit the teacher and to help him, and the likes like this, and he knows that uh, this is something that they all are aware of, and they will allow and permit, at this time he will come forward. At this time he will come forward. Maybe, for example, the teacher, he has a student that's very close to him, that's very close to him. Or, uh, or the likes like this, or a student that any maybe he's the reader, or maybe he's the one to remind the sheikh if he forgets, or maybe he's the one to correct him if he slips, and the likes like this. Sometimes the scholars, they'll have students that are close to them and that have been with them for some time, and that maybe they'll remind them or they'll help them in the, in the middle of the lesson where the sheikh will be looking for them. And the likes like this, so at this time, if this type of individual is there, then it would be allowed for him in the likes of this circumstance, and Allah knows best. After this, he says, وَلَا يُقِيمُ أَحَدًا مِنْ مَجْلِسِهِ فَإِنْ آثَارَهُ غَيْرُهُ بِمَجْلِسِهِ لَمْ يَأْخُذْهُ And he will not ask somebody to stand up so he can sit in his place. And if somebody showed preference for him and got up and allowed him to sit in his spot, then he will not sit there then he will not sit there. He says, He said that he will not do that. And he, if somebody were, were sitting there, he himself, he will not tell them to stand up or ask them to stand up and take their place. And likewise, if somebody seen him and showed preference for him, and was going to be courteous to him and stand up and let him sit in his place, that he will not sit in that place. He will not take that. He will not take that uh, and accept that from, from him. Except if this is something, again, where there's an exception, where there's a benefit in general for, 
for those who are in the gathering. For him, for example, again, for him to be close to the teacher so he can remind him and to review with him and the likes like this and mention issues that uh, the, the, the students and those who are present in the gathering will benefit. And if from him reminding or reading or mentioning benefits or the likes like this for the teacher, for the teacher in the class. This likewise has been uh, narrated uh, on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the from the uh, hadith of Ibn Umar radiyallahu anhuma in Bukhari and Muslim. The Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "لا يقيمن أحد رجلا من مجلسه ثم ثم يجلس فيه ولكن تفسحوا وتوسعوا." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that one of you should not make another man stand up from his spot where he's sitting in the gathering and then sit in his place, but rather you should spread out and make room. But rather you should spread out and make room. And he tafassahu wa tawassahu to spread out and to make room here what that would require for the people to come together. And he yatazahamun they'll come together. And he, and this is the case. And uh, likewise. Uh, it's been mentioned as well in the, about Ibn Umar radiyallahu uh, anhu wa kana Ibn Umar idha qama lahu rajulun min majlisihi lam yajlis fihi lam yajlis fihi that Ibn Umar if this happened to him he's the narrator of the narration radiyallahu uh, anhuma if somebody did that for him he would not sit there he would not sit there and he would turn away from that and uh, there's a general benefit here and that is uh, if somebody backs down from a right or gives up a charity or the likes like this but it's thought or one is uh, thinking that it's most probable that that person only did that out of shyness he only did that out of shyness from that person from from that person he should not take that right it's not allowed it's not allowed to take that right so many times this would be the case maybe he would only get out out of shyness for that person and the likes like this or for example sometimes maybe uh, a person, he may see his neighbor. He may see his neighbor going into the door, for example. And the, the neighbor will have food with him. Maybe he's bringing food in for his family. And the neighbor, he never had any intention of, in, uh, of inviting guests. But at that same time, he's seen his neighbor. And he, the neighbor came at the same time. So now he will tell him, any marhaban, come eat with us. And he will invite him to eat. And the likes like this, out of courtesy and kindness. But he did not intend any to invite him at this time. So in a situation like this, the people of knowledge, they mention it's an obligation to refuse that invitation. Because he's only inviting now because it just happened that he's there and he's shy and he doesn't want to be rude and he's trying to be courteous and this is why he's inviting him in. Not necessarily because he had went and prepared to invite a guest into his house. So these type of situations like this, uh, whenever somebody who will give up a right or, or do some act of kindness or charity or offer that, any, but it's probably because of shyness, out of hayat, or istihyat from that person, then you should not take that right. Even some of the people of knowledge, they mentioned, if you took that right, you should give it back. You should give it back. So this is a, a similar like this. And he, that maybe a person, he will be like that. Maybe a person, he will be like that. Or maybe it could be likewise, he just wants to honor him and to respect him. But in any case, any, Ibn Umar, he would back away from that. And the people of knowledge, they mentioned that this is out of wara and piety out of wara and piety, and likewise to teach the people as well, to teach the people uh, as well. Sometimes maybe we see something similar like this, uh, maybe it's not out of shyness, maybe it's out of respect, somebody backing away from the front line to let somebody else come in the front. And in general, a person, he really should not do that. He should, if he's in the front line, he should take that, he should take that spot. He should, he should, uh, he should take that spot. That's his right, he came first, then he should, uh, he should take that. He should take that spot yani, and not back away from that uh, for somebody else, yani, unless there is a specific benefit or reason yani, for that. But in general, uh, he will not prefer anyone over his own soul with regards to drawing near to Allah. As shayu bi shayuthkar, mentioning one thing leads to another, along with that, likewise, a person, he will not strive so hard to get into the front line that he will hurt others. So to harm the believers or to put pressure on them or to put them in a bad situation or to cause somebody else to back up because Yanni is so tight or there's not enough room Yanni first because somebody else is hastening to be in the front row. Maybe he's not originally there and he tried to squeeze in in the last minute and then this will cause uh, the rest of the people in the line who had more right to be there to be, uh, to be crowded or to be disturbed in the prayer 
or even for sometimes for some of them who were there much longer to back away and the like like this. So now this hirs or this diligence to yani, draw near to Allah is leading him to harm the believers. So this person here has has been deceived. We should not let our diligence to, to draw near to Allah or to hasten to do good lead us to harming to harming the Muslims. To harming the Muslims. So this person here is better for him to stay in the second or third row than harming the people. Than harming the people. But in any case, now this, the discussion at hand here is that one he will he will uh, not sit in the place of another person, and he will not uh, ask somebody else to stand up. And a person who came there first, he has the right to that. A person who came there first, he has the right to that. Even if that person came there first and then got up for a particular need and uh, then he came back, he still has the right for that. He still has the right for that. And this likewise has been connected by Ali Imam Muslim from the Hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا قَامَ أَحَدُكُمْ مِنْ مَجْلِسِهِ ثُمَّ رَجَعَ إِلَيْهِ ثُمَّ رَجَعَ إِلَيْهِ فَهُوَ حَقُّ بِهِ فَهُوَ أَحَقُّ بِهِ That if a person that if one of you uh, if that if one of you uh, stands up from his place where he was sitting and then he comes back to it then he has more right for it then he has more right for it the people of Naraz they mention that this is in the case whenever he leaves his uh, spot for a particular need and he inside the masjid and he, on the on the premises of the masjid not that he will come and sit down and then he will leave and go home and then come back and expect to have the spot لا. And he will come and sit down, and then he will have a need uh, to go speak to somebody outside, or to go uh, review the Quran in another corner, or to do something briefly, or to go get something from his car, for example, and then just to return. He's not having the intention of leaving his spot, yani to leave. He has the intention that he's staying in his spot. He just had to get up for a moment. So this type of individual, now he has more right. He has more right to that spot. He has more more right to that spot, even if he did not leave anything there. Even if he did not leave anything there. And he, and he came back, then uh, the spot that he was there, he has the most right to that. And if somebody was sitting there whenever he came back, he has the right to, to inform them. And if he did that, he would do that gently. And he would do that in a kind manner. And he would say to him, excuse me, barakallah fiqh, or after giving him salam, for example. Excuse me, barakallah fiqh, I was sitting here since such and such, since, since this many hours, or, the, or, or since earlier, and I only got up for a moment, uh, I would like to have my, my, my spot back. Like this, and he, this is how he would deal with that. He would not come and be rude and tap him on the shoulder harshly and say, didn't you see me sitting there and cause trouble or cause problems, or you know that I was there, and the likes like this. This is all for the bad manners. Rather, he would inform him. Or even if he liked, he will just back away from that and avoid that and, and back down from his right and sit somewhere else. But if he wanted to take his place back, he has, he has that right with uh, the, the evidence clearly in this narration. The evidence clearly in this narration. So he says, وَلَا يَجْرِزُ وَسَطَ الْحَلْقَةِ إِلَّا لِذَرُورَةِ وَلَا بَيْنَ الصَّحِبَيْنِ إِلَّا بِرِضَاهُمَا وَإِذَا فُسْحِهَا لَهُ قَعَدَ وَإِذَا فُسْحِهَا, وإذا فسحها له he says, likewise, he will not sit in the middle, in the middle of the circle, in the middle of the circle, and uh, except any in the case of a necessity, except in the case of a necessity. There's a narration that is narrated in any with regards to this in Sunan Abi Dawood, and likewise in Tirmidhi, and uh, by Ali Imam Ahmed from the Hadith of Hudayfa, radiyallahu anhu. But many of the people of, of knowledge mentioned that it's weak, mentioned that it's weak. But there is an understanding. Yani, with regards to it, yani, there's a curse yani, in this narration, but uh, the description to the Prophet وسلم, is weak. It's mentioned that Hudayfa radiallahu anhu, he says, Inna Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la'ana man jalasa wa sata al-halqa. That indeed the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he cursed the one who sit in the middle of the, of the circle of knowledge. So this is uh, a weak narration, but it's mentioned here, and there is wisdom behind that. And this is, again, in a situation where the the gathering is is crowded, so if the gathering is crowded, the people of knowledge, any you know, supposing that the narration is authentic or just uh, discussing this particular issue, if the crowding is gathered and the person now he's he's stepping over the necks of the people, and he's stepping over them and through them to come to sit in the middle, this is what is considered, any you know, this is from bad manners, 
or if he's sitting there in a manner where he's going to sit in the middle and he's going to sit up and be blocking the view of the people, blocking the view of the people. Maybe he'll be sitting in a situation and then maybe he'll be sitting up high and then the people behind him will not be able to see, will not be able to see. He will not sit down properly, for example, and then he will be like a, a blo blocking the view for everyone who comes after him, for everyone who comes after him. So. All of this here is uh, from uh, from the bad manners, from the bad manners. Even if the narration is not authentic, it's still the the understanding here that it's not something that's recommended it is established, is established except whenever there's a need for that. He says. So then, likewise, you will not sit between two companions except with uh, with them uh, being pleased with that, and he except with them allowing that, and he's sitting between sitting between two people, and this likewise has come. Uh, in, uh, in the narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sunan Abi Dawood from the Hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said لا يحل للرجل أن يفرق بين اثنين إلا بإذنهما إلا بإذنهما لا, لا يحل للرجل أن يفرق بين اثنين إلا بإذنهما that it's not allowed for a man to separate between two individuals except with their permission meaning in the gathering the people of Nara, as they mentioned, that this is the case whenever they're sitting together, any you know, their companions, like what he mentions here, wala baina asahibaini, asahibaini, two companions who have any. You know, it's known that they're together and they're sitting together. There's not room between them, so it's known that they're together. So therefore, he will not come and squeeze in between them, and uh, any you know, in, in this manner like this, and force himself between them, except with their permission except with their permission because likewise this is bad manners and also this could be a reason to cause dissension or some problems in, in the hearts of of the people in the gathering if there are individuals sitting there together but there's a space between them there's a space between them then this is allowed this is not what is intended and if, for example if somebody comes on Juma and there's people sitting in the row many times there'll be a gap big enough for a person to sit there so he will not say, oh, there's a prohibition between sitting between two people. No, he will fill that gap. He will fill that gap. The prohibition is between two individuals. They're together. They're together. And, he, and the lights like this, where they're very close together. And, and it's uh, apparent from that. And there's no space or there's no room. Or their companions, they're, to, they're, they're together reviewing or speaking. And the lights like this, he will not separate between the, the two of them. As for if he came and there is a space there, then he will sit there. Then he will sit there. And Allah knows best. He says, فَإِذَا وَإِذَا فُسِحَ لَهُ قَعَدَ And if any room was made for him, then he'll sit down. Then he'll sit down. And we've seen some uh, examples previously from uh, the Salaf that one of them would say that if a man had come uh, late to sit down and there was no place for him, then we would move around and act like we're making room for him. They will move around and act like we're making room for him. Then he, there's no room for him. But they wouldn't just look up at him and say, there's no room for you. They wouldn't do the likes of this. They these type of manners with each other. Rather, he would come to sit down, and one of them, he would move his body and, and, and situate himself and he, as if he's trying to make room, although there's no room for him, there's nowhere for him to go. Although there's nowhere for, there's nowhere for him to go. So likewise, this is from the, the good and, and the noble manners. So if, the room, if room is made for him, then he'll sit down. If room is made for him, then he'll sit down. So the general rule when coming to the gathering is he'll come to where the gathering ends, yani where, where it ends. If it ends in the back, he stops in the back. If it ends in the front, he stops in the front. No doubt if somebody comes and there's uh, empty spaces that are easy to reach, he'll, he will come forward, but he will not step over the people. He will not harm the people in that. He will not harm the people in that. If he wants to sit in the front, then he will come early. He'll come early, and this is the right yani of the one who comes early. And I remember, uh, alhamdulillah, myself to come to the dars of Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, which is after Maghrib, I used to leave the university before Asr. I would leave the university before Asr, and I would pray Asr there, in the place where his, where his chair is. I would pray Asr there in, the, in front of the chair of Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, or near there. And then after that, I would sit there, and I would review and study until class time. I need to make sure I have a place close in the front, because if not, you will sit in the back. Because if not, you, you will sit in the back. And, he, and, and the likes like this. And if anybody's ever been in the likes of these gatherings, they know that sitting in the front is much different than sitting in the back. And that the individuals sitting in the front, their manners are much different than the individuals sitting in the back. And you'll find people sitting in the back, they're on their phone, or they're talking to each other, or they're doing uh, all types of other things that any, we did not come there for. But those people who are sitting in the front, 
and if, many times they're very diligent and attentive and paying attention and, and the likes like that and, and it's much more beneficial. So the point is if a person he wants to come to the, to the front he should, he should come early. He should come early and if he does not uh, come early then he will sit where a space is available for him and he will not step over the people and harm them. He will not step over the people and harm them. And the like like this. He says, وَيَحْرِسُ عَلَىٰ الْقُرْبِ مِنَ الْأُسْتَاذِ لِيَفْهَمَ كَلَامَهُ فَهْمًا كَامِلًا بِلَا مَشَقَّةِ عَلَىٰ شَرِيطَةِ أَنْ لَا يَرْتَفِعَ فِي الْمَجْرِسِ عَلَىٰ أَفْضَلَ مِنْهُ He said, and likewise, he'll be diligent to sit near the teacher. Likewise, he'll be diligent to sit near the teacher. But he mentions their wisdom from that. He said, in order to understand him completely. He wants to sit near to him in order to understand him completely. Uh, without any hardship or difficulty, and this is in a condition. This is upon the condition that he will not any yani, raise himself above somebody else who has more right, any yani, that's more virtuous than him. And yani, maybe sometimes there's an individual who uh, has uh, the again the sheikh is close to him, for any from the from the students of a particular teacher that have been with him for some time, and the sheikh he prefers that this individual or these individuals are near him. And the likes like this in the gathering, then a person, he will not come in their place. And the likes like that, rather he will leave that for them because the sheikh, he has preferred that. Because the sheikh, he has preferred that. Uh, but uh, other than that, he would try to come close. But he will not come close in a manner that would disturb the teacher. And uh, again, he's coming close in order to benefit. In order to benefit from the teacher. In order to benefit from the teacher. Not in order to be known by the teacher. And this is something that's very important likewise. And this is a great calamity that a person who would try to get close to the scholars or to the people of knowledge or to the teachers in order to be known by them, in order to be known by them or to have uh, a relationship with them and the likes like this. And this is why he wants to be there. And uh, many times this uh, intention will lead a person to fall into a foul in a lowly way. And uh, this is a great problem that we have seen today. People trying to be close to the people of knowledge but they do not imitate or act like the people of knowledge. They do not resemble and move and conduct themselves like the people of knowledge. Rather, some of them, they will use that any to their advantage. And this is something that for years, the Hizbis, they used to find fault with the Salafis, any of the students of knowledge. And whenever, whenever one of the people of knowledge would refute any some uh, of, the, of the, the deviant individuals, they would try to say, oh, you're using the scholars like weapons. And this was from their false claim, and the claim of, of the Hizbis, and, and this was false. But there's individuals, Wallahu al-Musta'an, that has been proven from their characteristics that they did not do anything except prove those Hizbis right. That there are individuals that, uh, that are doing those, the likes of those affairs. Yani, yushammituna bina al-a'da, making the, the enemies of the Sunnah laugh at us. And yani, because of their foul manners and their foul behavior, and the likes like this, and he drawing near to the people of knowledge, and even any some of them blocking the pathway and making it not possible to go to them, any yani except through them. And this is a foul in a lowly way. And this is a foul in a lowly way. And uh, these people in this manner, they will not, they will not remain. And falsehood, maybe sometimes it will poke his head and have a role, but it will be dropped and it will be clarified. And uh, those people likewise will be exposed if Allah did not guide them. So this is something that's important. No doubt to be close to the, to the scholars or even to know them and to have a relationship with them, but in order to benefit from them, in order to benefit from them, from their knowledge and, and the likes like this, not to have a position with them in order to have position over the people or to have authority over the people or to tell the people that if you don't do such and such, then I'm going to tell Sheikh so-and-so to warn from you or I have a list and I have your name on it like some of them do. The likes of these affairs, if you don't agree with them, or if you do something that's not in accordance with them, they'll put your name on a list and just wait, I'll tell the sheikh about this. And the likes like this, all of this is a foul in a lowly way. And uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect, to protect us and our community from the fitna and the people and the people of fitna. From the means to be protected from that is to know it. It's to know it. So you know it in order to avoid it and to leave it. You don't know it in order to delve into it and, and, and be a part of it. You learn about the fitna and the people of fitna to identify them and stay away from them and to avoid their fitna and to not be a part of their fitna or draw in or drawn into their fitna. But 
uh, to, uh, to know it in order to avoid it and to leave it upon clarity and to not be deceived by the likes of, of those affairs, by the likes of those affairs. So here again, he says to get close to the teacher, to sit close to him. And likewise, there's evidence for this in the Sunnah. Who knows the evidence? The Hadith Jibreel, alayhi salatu, alayhi salatu wasalam, whenever he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and jalasa ila nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa asnada rukbatayhi ila rukbatayhi wa wada kaffayhi ala fakhidayhi wa wada wa wada kaffayhi ala fakhidayhi. He said in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until he put his knees to his knees and he's sitting there very close, sitting there very close. So the people of Nala, as they mentioned that this is an example of of how the student he will sit, he will sit close, he, he will sit close in this manner, he will sit close in this manner. I remember likewise uh, uh, an, uh, a time in the Prophet's Masjid, alayhi salatu wasalam, whenever the American students, we had uh, a private uh, meeting uh, before, uh, before going back for the summer, school had uh, ended and uh, we're about to come back for the summer and one of the brothers had requested from Shaykh Abdurrahman Muhyiddin uh, rahimahullah ta'ala to sit with us and give us advice before we went back and uh, we met him in, in the prophet's masjid uh, alayhi salatu was salam and uh, whenever he came to us he told us to sit down we're maybe like 10 or more uh, students alhamdulillah and i was right in front of him and he said uh, he said sit down so we hurried up and sit down i'm sitting right directly in front of him and then uh, everybody is sitting around. There's people around next to me on the sides and then behind me. And then he said, come closer. So he's already right in front of me. <laughs> so I came closer. He said, come closer. He said, all the way, wallahi, until my knees are touching his knees. And we're all, and the, and the brothers are behind me with their knees in my back. And he like this. And now all of us are very, very close. And after this, he gave us a great admonishment about the greatness of Allah and reminding us of the tawheed of Allah and uh, advising us to fear Allah and to obey Him and to know that Allah is powerful and strong and He's kind and merciful but likewise He's severe in punishment and then He reminded us likewise when we go back to call the people and to help the people and to be patient with the people and He mentioned likewise one of you if you memorize Usul al and you understand it properly and you comprehend it in the right way. If you go back home, they'll think that you're Sheikhul Islam ibn Taymiyyah. <laughs> the people, because he knows the people in America. He said, if you go back home now, and, he, and you memorize just this little method, imagine this opportunity that you have encouraged us to, to, to memorize knowledge and to learn the knowledge. And he said, Rahimahullah, if you go back, if you memorize this and go home and teach them, they'll think you're Sheikhul Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Ah, rahimahullah. Rahimahullah. He's very nice. And very kind. But this is the case though. So you want to sit close to this to the teacher to benefit from him. Not to use him or to, to manipulate the people or to be known. And the likes like this. This can be a fitna for somebody. This can be a fitna for somebody. I witnessed it with my eyes. These are not stories that were related to me. These are things that I experienced. So uh, this is something to, to remember. Shaitan, he will try to lead, lead a student away. And to detour him. And to cause... Much problems, Wallahu al-Musta'an. So to review the issue of the heart and to ask a person, a person to ask himself, you know, why am I seeking knowledge? Why am I in the first row? Why am I, why am I reviewing? And the likes like this, and, he, and to correct his intention and to hope for the reward, for the reward from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. After this, he says, we ta'adabu ma rufqatihi wa hawli al-majlis, fa'inna ta'adubahu ma'ahum. تأدب مع الأستاذ واحترام لمجلسه ويقعد قعدة المتعلمين. The here is زائدة in the text that we have. يعني ويقعد قعدة المتعلمين. يتأدب مع رفقته. He will have also along with that. يعني this what has preceded was some mention of manners with regards to the teacher. And then with regards to the gathering in general, and now he's talking about having manners with the other students, and he with his peers, those who are in the gathering along with him. So he will also have noble and good manners with uh, his peers, and those are, uh, are along with him seeking knowledge, and the other individuals along with him in the gathering. And the other individuals along with him in the gathering, and he the attendees. The, the attendees of the gathering. So he must have noble and good manners with them likewise. And he meaning not to disturb them or not to be rude to them or, or, or not to harm them 
in any manner. Any this is this is uh, likewise from the very important manners of of the student of knowledge. He says because verily having good manners with the attendees and those in the gathering is in reality having manners uh, for the teacher and respecting the gatherings, having manners for the teacher and respecting. Uh, his gathering and respecting his gathering. So if a person, he came and he's having rude, ru and he's rude and having lowly manners with the people in the gathering the, and disrespecting them, in reality, he's disrespecting the one who's, who's heading the gathering, the one who's hosting the gathering or the teacher of the gathering and the likes like this. And he, for example, if a person, he had a dinner at his house and he invited individuals to his home for dinner and, and a, a number of people, they come as guests and one of them, he starts treating the guests rudely. One of them, he starts treating the guests rudely, calling them names, or, or, or taking their spot, or, or whatever the case may be. He's in reality not only disrespecting the, 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 the guests, he's disrespecting the host, and the men who, who invited him, and also his home, and also his home. So how about the house of Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala and the gatherings of knowledge in the house of Allah Azza wa Jal. So to have good manners with the other students and those also who were attending the gathering is in reality showing honor and respect to the teacher and likewise to, to the gathering in, uh, in the house of Allah, likewise honoring and respecting any of the sacred rights of Allah Azza wa Jal. The sacred rights of Allah Azza wa Jal. So to come and to disturb the people in the classes uh, is disrespectful, is disrespectful and should it should be avoided. He says, وَيَقْعُدُ قِعْدَةً and مُتَعَلِمِينَ قِعْدَةً and مُتَعَلِمِينَ This is uh, Ism Hay'ah. Yani he will sit in the manner of, of a student. He will sit in the manner of a student. Yani he will sit humbly. The people of Nala, as they mention, yani meaning that he will sit مُتَرَبِّعًا yani with his legs crossed. Or he will sit مُفْتَرِشًا Or he will sit yani مُفْتَرِشًا meaning the same way that he sits in in the Tashahud. In the Tashahud. Yani this is the the, the manner that, that he will sit like this, any or in another manner that's similar, yani, uh, and, uh, and the likes that is, uh, that is suitable, that is suitable. If he had a reason, uh, for example, to sit in another manner because uh, of uh, an ailment or, or because of old age or because of other difficulties, inshallah, he will be excused. But in general, he will sit in this manner. He will sit in this manner. And uh, likewise, yani, it could be understood from this as well. يَقْعُدُ قِعْدَةَ الْمُتَعَلِّمِينَ He will sit in the manner of a, of a student, not in the manner of a teacher. Meaning he will come in this manner. He's a student. He's not, he's not a teacher. So he'll be humble. He will be humble. He will not yani, sit in, in a manner where he thinks that he is the teacher or that he knows more than the teacher or that he is more qualified than the teacher or that he's waiting for the teacher to make mistakes or he's waiting to check him or he's waiting to find his slip or his fault or to pick that out and the likes like this. So he will come as a student and he will sit as, as a student and he, meaning for, for the sake of Allah. Meaning for, for, the, sake of, for the sake of Allah. He says, وَلَا يَضْحَكُوا وَلَا يُكْفِرُوا الْكَرَامَ بِلَا حَاجَةً وَلَا يَعْبَثُوا بِيَدِهِ وَلَا غَيْرِهَا وَلَا يَلْتَفِتُوا بِلَا حَاجَةٍ بَلْ يُكْبِرُوا عَلَىٰ الْأُسْتَاذِ مُنْصِتًا إِلَيْهِ مُنْصِتًا إِلَيْهِ So he says, and he will not laugh. He will not laugh, meaning this is in the gathering. He will not laugh. Uh, and he will not uh, speak a lot, any without need. He will not say anything. He will not say anything in the gathering except any whenever there's a need for that. Whenever there's a need for that. We've seen before that from the steps of learning is to be silent and then to listen. So he will not be laughing or joking or he will not be speaking without any need. And he will not be playing with his hand. And he playing with his hand or anything else. Any fidgeting and the likes like this. And he will not be looking around without any need as well. Rather he will devote himself and look directly and he will devote his heart to the knowledge and, and listening in the class, and he will look directly at the teacher quiet while he's quiet, while he's quiet. So this is no doubt any uh, not uh, from the noble manners to be in the gatherings of knowledge, laughing and joking, or talking amongst uh, oneself in, 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 the, in the gatherings of knowledge. This is from the bad manners. This is from the bad manners. If it's a must, and then a person, he will wait, and he will speak later, or he will, he, will, he will not come to the gathering. He will sit somewhere else if he needs to speak to the people or wants to talk to the people. If he came or she came to the masjid and did not intend to attend the class, then they will sit somewhere else where they're not going to disturb the people who came to the masjid to attend the class. 
because there are people who left their home for that purpose, and they came to the masjid for this reason. And then if other peoples come, and if other people come and then they disturb them, then this becomes a, a great problem. And likewise, it's from the lowly manners. In any case, the Prophet Sallallahu he did not used to laugh a lot. Rather, he warned from that. And, he, and laughing is allowed and permissible, but it will be in moderation, and it will not be taken to extremes. And it's been uh, corrected by Tirmidhi from the Hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, وَلَا تُكْثِرُوا ضحك فَإِنَّ كَثْرَةِ الضحك تُمِيتُوا الْقَلْبِ And do not laugh a lot. Do not laugh a lot, because laughing often is, will, will cause the heart to die. Yani yeah, always joking and laughing play, and, and playing and laughing yani yeah, to the extent where a person yani yeah, he, he'll be known for that this is not good this is something that will cause the heart yani yeah, to die and they were, he will not be able to benefit from admonition and he was not he will not be able to benefit and take the reminder or benefit from the advices he will not be able to take the reminder or benefit from the advices or take heed and listen to the admonition properly because his heart Will become uh, will become dead, yani, and not benefit from the likes of the beneficial knowledge. This is from laughing too much and joking and playing games too much. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the most of the time he would smile. If there was something that pleased him, he would smile, and he was known for that smiling and being cheerful. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and sometimes he would laugh until his uh, the his teeth his molar teeth could be seen. But this is rare. But this is rare. And the point is that a person he will not do this. And he, but sometimes, especially not, especially not in the class or in the lesson, but sometimes maybe there will be issues that will be mentioned yani, briefly or from time to time that will cause the people yani, to laugh. And this is yani, in moderation, no doubt, is, is allowed. And with regards to Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, Hafidhullah, yani, he was from those who always uh, had uh, a very serious uh, demeanor in the class all the time. But a few times I remember the questions would come or issues would come and he would smile, and he would smile. Or even sometimes the people, the people they would maybe they would maybe laugh because of certain situations and the likes like this. And likewise, in the gatherings of the people of knowledge, Sheikh Abdul Razak or Sheikh Suleiman, sometimes they would mention, yani, uh, a brief, uh, light-hearted situation or circumstance. The people would laugh about that, yani, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. So the people of knowledge, they say, laughing or joking and mizah, if it's lighthearted and sometimes, then it's allowed and permissible, so long as it's not considered lewd or lowly, or it's not considered something that's done all the time, and a person, he becomes known for that. But there are certain circumstances whenever it would be yani, something that's good, for example, in hardship or difficulty, like traveling, like traveling to be lighthearted and to make the, the people on the, on the journey laugh and to lighten up the, 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 the journey and the likes like this, this is something that's good and from the good manners. But to be a person who's always laughing and joking and coming behind the people and tapping them on one shoulder and running to the other side or doing the likes of this or coming behind the people and kicking their foot and then tr and going to the other side like they call it a joker, all of this is not from the noble manners and from the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a person, he will not do that. And it's been narrated from, uh, from uh, Muhammad ibn Munkadar. Muhammad ibn Munkadar, rahimahullah, he died in the year 100, 130. He said, Qalat li ummi. He said, my mother said to me, and this is beautiful advice his mother gave him whenever he was a child. She said to him, la tumazih al-gilman. La tumazih al-gilman. Do not play, do not joke around with the young boys. Do not joke around with the young boys. She says, fatahuna alayhim, aw yajtari'u alayka. Because either you are going to become uh, insignificant in their eyes, or they're going to be bold and take advantage of you. They're going to be bold and uh, become bold and take advantage of you. And he, so this was advice for him. And then whenever he was young, not 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 to joke around too much like this with the, with the children, because if you do that, and then that pretty soon they're going to consider you a joker, and they're not going to take you seriously, and then you will become insignificant in their eyes. Or they're on, a, on top of that, you need to become bold and start taking advantage of you and the likes like this, or picking on you and belittling you. So likewise, any uh, any the the, the 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 believer in general, and a, a person of not as likewise, he would not become any like this. Someone who's considered a joker, always joking. Rather, he would take life seriously. He would take life seriously. And if there's something lighthearted to benefit and to enter some peace or some happiness in, in the heart of a believer to make him smile or, or laugh briefly, then this is. This is allowed. Now he says, Rahimahullah ta'ala wa la yasbiku ila sharhi mas'alatin aw jawabi su'alin illa an ya'lama ridahu fa yastadilla ala fadilati al-muta'allim. He said, and likewise, he will not proceed 
يعني the teacher in explaining a particular issue or responding to a question. يعني the, sometimes the teacher he will present uh, issues or they'll be discussing topics and the likes like this and maybe uh, the student he has uh, some knowledge of these affairs. So he's saying here that uh, the student he will not precede the teacher and he will not say anything in any, these issues and he will not answer the question and proceed in the answer. And he, sometimes the question will come but the teacher is not intending for the people to answer out loud. Rather, he's saying the question to get, to get their attention, and then he's going to answer the question. And then he's going to answer the question. Other times, maybe he will ask a question and expect the people to, to answer. But any, generally, from the context or the, the, the body language uh, or the context of the speech, they will be known what, what is intended. What is intended. So in any case, he will not any, uh, proceed, and he will not uh, speak out. He says, except in the case whenever uh, he knows that the teacher is pleased with this, or this is something that he likes, meaning in order for the, any, that person to say something or to mention the answer uh, and the likes in order to clarify that that particular student has a virtue. So maybe the teacher, he'll want to verify or clarify any to the gathering that there is a particular uh, student he knows who knows the answer, so any he will be allowed to answer. And the teacher and the student, he knows that, for example. But in general, the, this is any the issue here. He will talk about this uh, again in more detail. And in not uh, saying uh, anything or responding or cutting off the, the speech or uh, mentioning the issue. Rather, he will mention that it's preferred to, rather to pretend as if one he never heard that before. This is, was, this is what has been narrated. We discussed that, inshallah whenever it comes in more detail. He says, وَلَا يَقْرَأُ عَلَىٰ أُسْتَاذِهِ عِنْدَ شُغْرِ قَلْبِهِ وَمَلَلِهِ وَغَمِّهِ وَنُعَاسِهِ وَنَحْوِ ذَلِكَ مِمَّا يَشُقُ عَلَيْهِ أَوْ يَمْنَعُهُ إِسْتِفَاءَ الشَّرْحِ He said, and likewise, he will not read yani, to his teacher while his teacher, his heart is preoccupied or while he's bored, yani, meaning he's tired or while he's worried or he's sleepy. And the, and the life like this whenever it's difficult for him. And uh, it would, uh, he will be in a circumstance that will prohibit him from giving the proper explanation. From giving the proper explanation. And he, and he fulfilling the, the lesson properly. So the, teach, the student, he has to observe his teacher. And he, one, he should uh, try to benefit from him and the life like this. There's the classes that are general. And the times are set for those. And then maybe there's another time that will be set for specific students. And the likes like this. So this time here should be according to uh, the teacher and not to the students. And sometimes, uh, for example, a teacher, he will want to benefit or help the students. And then that student, he will impose a time on the teacher that's in reality difficult or hard. And then in the end, the teacher will not be able to continue. He'll not be able to continue because now he's trying to uh, compromise his own schedule and his own, uh, his own uh, time in order to meet the time of the student, in order to meet the time of the student. I mean, this could become hard for, for the teacher, especially if he has a number of classes and other obligations and the likes like this. So the origin with regards to this is that if a, a person he wanted to study then, or he wanted to have a side class or have some benefit like this, as he would ask the, the teacher for the time that's suitable for the teacher. And, and many times the teacher, likewise, maybe he will cooperate with him and he will try to find a time that's suitable for both of them but uh, this is something that the student should keep in mind, that maybe the teacher wants to help him or benefit with him or even give him a private class. But because he is not any flexible with his time, then he did not uh, get that benefit. He did not get that benefit. So this is something likewise to observe. He says, وَلَا يَسْأَلُهُ عَنْ شَيْءٍ فِي غَيْرِ مَوْضِئِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ يَعْلَمَ مِنْ حَادِهِ أَنَّهُ and he should not like, he should not ask the teacher anything about a subject that's not in the proper spot. That's not in the proper spot, except if he knows that from the teacher that he does not mind that, and he does not dislike that. And he may be there studying uh, issues in the book of Tahara, and then uh, the narration is mentioned and it has a relationship or a benefit that could be understood in another chapter. But the topic at hand is not that chapter. It's not that chapter. So to ask about that issue in the middle of the class or in the middle of the lesson, this is uh, not uh, proper, nor is it advised, and he, except if he knew that the teacher did not like that. But generally, the teacher, he will not like that because this would disturb or disrupt or detour the class. And many times, these type of questions will come and take up any of the rest of the class or detour 
يعني the whole uh, the whole path of of the class or the direction of the class and the likes like this. So this is something likewise that the student he should observe. That again, if these questions do come up and he's uh, serious about learning them or asking about them or increasing in knowledge with regards to that, he'll write it down and he will ask any at, after class or at another time whenever it's more proper. At another time whenever it's more proper. S questions uh, and, and the likes like this are very important, but it's very important likewise to learn the manners of asking a question. So there's manners to ask a question, how to present them and when to present them. How to present them and when to present them. And the first uh, issue with regards to this is to be sincere and to ask the question for the sake of Allah and hoping to have understanding and clarification and, and not for any other reason. And then after that, looking for the proper and most suitable time. The proper and most suitable time. He says, وَلَا يُلِحُّ فِي السُؤَالِ إِلْحَاحًا مُضْجِرًا And he will not persist. He will not persist in asking him until, until he's bothering him. So maybe he'll ask a question. And maybe the teacher, he will say, I don't know. Maybe he'll say, I don't know. So he will not say, oh, what I have to know. And, and, and he will keep telling him and keep telling him. Or he will tell him, for example, right now is not the proper time. And he will persist and persist. Or he'll tell him uh, another, another reason. And he will not answer the question for whatever the case may be. Either he does not know or he does not remember the details. Or now is not the proper time. Or so on and so forth. So he will not persist. And he will not persist in bothering him and, and trying to uh, and force him to answer. And it has been narrated from Ali Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala that an individual came to him from Andalus. Came to him in Al Medina. He's in Al Medina. In Andalus, this is like in, around Spain and in Morocco, in this area in, in the far west. In the, in the far west. And he, many, many miles from him. He came to him with a, a question and an issue that occurred between him and his people. And he came to Ali Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala to ask him about that. And Imam Malik said, I don't know. He said, La Hadri. He said, what, 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 what am I going to do? I'm going to go back to my people. What am I going to tell them? What am I going to say to them? He said, you go back and you tell them that Malik, he said, he does not know. <laughs> you go back to them and you tell him that Malik said he does not know. So this is the case. If he doesn't know, what can you expect for him to do? You want him to lie or to make up something? You need to answer the question. Like, this is not proper. So in any case, answering questions in the religion and speaking of the, about the deen in general is a major affair. It's a major affair. A person, he could say one word and it could, could earn him the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. And, he, and it earn, him, earn him high ranks. And he could say one word. It could drop him on his face. It could drop him on his face and, and, and earn, earn him the anger of Allah Azza wa Jal. So that is something that's very serious. And the issue of arifta or answering questions and giving rulings and directing the people and advising them, this is something that is very major. It's a great responsibility. It's a great responsibility. So for, the, for a person to say he does not know or to, to delay the answer so that he can review or he can make the issue uh, good, this is a sign uh, of truthfulness in, in the knowledge that he carries and not a sign of ignorance. And not a sign of ignorance. And the people of knowledge, they would say, يعني أن الطالب أو الرجل إذا أخطأ لا أدري أصيبة مقاتله. That a person, if he did not learn how to say I don't know, then he will be he will receive his death blow. And I mean, this will be the means for his his misguidance and for his failure. What do you have to be learned? So likewise, the people of not as they mentioned, we have seen that as well about the teacher that he will say I do not know. But also the, the student, he will do the same thing. So if the teacher tells, uh, does not answer his question or delays him, then he will not persist upon him. وَيَكْتَنِمُ سُؤَالَهُ عِنْدَ طِيبِ نَفْسِهِ وَفَرَاغِهِ وَيَتَلَطَّفُ فِي سُؤَالِهِ وَيُحْسِنُ خِطَابَهُ وَلَا يَسْتَحِي مِنَ السُؤَالِ أَمَّا أَشْكَلَ عَلَيْهِ So he says he would take advantage of asking him whenever he uh, uh, whenever his has an open heart. And whenever he is fresh and he is strong and attentive. And, and whenever he is free. And he will be kind and gentle in the manner that he asks the question. And he will uh, arrange the question in uh, a good manner. He will address the teacher in the proper way. And he will not be shy to ask about things that he does not know. He will not be shy to ask questions about affairs that are not clear for him. And he, 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 will, not, he will not stop him. And he, maybe it's an I issue, maybe somebody will think that it's from the, the first issues to know. But he's not aware of it. He will not be shy. Issue in tahara for himself or for his family or for a man or for a woman or issues in ihtilam or, or whatever the case may be or issues with regards to sins 
or with regards to the, any aspect of the religion. He will not be shy. If there's something he did not understand, then he will ask about that, and he will get the details of that. No doubt if it's something that's revealing uh, shortcomings, he will ask in a manner generally that will not uh, expose himself or his family. If it's something related to his family, they have done or fallen into something that's not praiseworthy, he will not say, my son did this, or my wife did this, or my husband did this. He will say, what is the ruling for the one who's done this? Like this, in order to not expose that individual, or to expose one's own self, and the likes like this, or to expose others, or to expose others whenever it's not necessary. He says, so he's not shy to ask the question if something is not clear for him. Rather, he will seek the clarification of that in the most complete manner. There's a mistake here too. Huh? It says, ilmuhu. This has proceeded as well. And what is intended by that? And the one who is shy, he, his knowledge will be weak. And the person who is yani, he's shy to ask the people for things that he does not know, then his deficiency will be exposed and known whenever he's in the gatherings with the men. And whenever he's in the gatherings with the men. Meaning a person who does not ask what he does not know, he will remain ignorant. And he will not know if he's too shy or, or he's too arrogant and, and the likes like this to, 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 to admit that he does not know and that others do know and he doesn't ever learn and he remains ignorant. Then whenever he's in the gatherings with the people who are real men and they're upon the right path and they're upon noble manners, then he will be exposed, especially if he begins speaking. Especially if he begins speaking. And many times this will be the case. A person maybe he will look noble. And the likes like this, but then whenever he speaks, it's really known that he is from the lowly, or the lowest, or the most ignorant of, of the people. So again, he will not be shy. We have seen the narration of Mujahid, rahimahullah. He says, "La, uh, la yastafidu min al-ilmi, aw la yata'alamu al-ilma, aw la yasluhu al-ilmi, mutakabir, wa la mustahyin." The one who is arrogant, or the one who is shy. هذا وصل الله على نبينا